He peered inside the doorway, slipped the crowbar back into his belt, and stepped inside. Large, box-shaped electricity meters lined the walls of the booster valve room. Thick black cables snaked their way across the ceiling. There was a door on the far side. Fraser headed straight for it. Once through the booster valve room, he made his way down a narrow, dimly lit passageway until he came to a small red door. It opened easily, and as Fraser looked out from the doorway, he smiled at the view. Endless rows of bookshelves, each one rising from floor to ceiling, stretched away from him as far as the eye could see. Old and faded fluorescent lights lined each aisle, but at night only every third one was on. The lights themselves were so old that the whiteness of their fluorescent tubes had gone a moldy ivory color, and a powder of oxidized fluorine had settled inside them. Their sickly state gave the lowest floor of the New York State Library a haunting yellowish glow. The New York State Library, 100 years old, a silent sanctuary of history and knowledge and also the owner of twelve brand-new Pentium III computers, whose hard drives would soon be in the back room of Mike Fraser's apartment. Fraser checked the lock on the door. Safety lock. From the booster room you didn't need a key, but from the library side you did. One of those automatically closing doors designed to keep the curious out, but not to accidentally lock the electricity workers in. Fraser thought for a moment. If he had to make a hasty escape, he wouldn't have time to pick the lock. He searched around for an answer. That'll work, he thought, spying the nearest bookshelf. He grabbed the first book he could reach and wedged it on the floor between the red door and its frame. The door now safely ajar, Fraser hustled down the nearest aisle. Soon the small red door marked booster valve, no staff access permitted, was but a tiny square in the distance behind him. Mike Fraser didn't even notice. He knew exactly where he was going now. Terry Ryan looked at his watch again. It was 2.15 a.m., four minutes after he'd last looked. Ryan sighed. Jesus, the time crawled on this job. Status check. Officials in charge of third element confirmed delivery complete. Idly, Ryan peered out through the massive floor-to-ceiling windows of the atrium of the New York State Library. Nothing stirred on the streets outside. He touched the gun by his side and grunted a laugh. Security guards in a library. A library, for God's sake. The pay was the same, he guessed, and so long as that kept coming, Terry Ryan didn't care whether they asked him to guard. He continued to stroll around the atrium, whistling quietly to himself. Clink, clink. He froze. A noise. There it was again. Clink, clink. Ryan held his breath. It had come from the left. He drew his gun. Behind the information desk, Mike Fraser swore as he picked his screwdriver up from the floor. He peered out over the counter. No one to the left, nor to the right. He let out a deep breath. No one had... Freeze! Fraser snapped around. He took in the scene quickly. Security guard. Gun. Maybe fifteen meters, twenty at the most. As if there was a choice. I said freeze! Terry Ryan yelled. But the thief had already made a break for it. Ryan broke into a run. Books on shelves became streaking blurs of color as Fraser bolted down a narrow aisle. His heart pounded loudly inside his head. And then suddenly he saw the door and the sign, Stairs. Fraser hit the stairs running, grabbing the banister, sliding down the first flight. The security guard, Ryan, flew in two seconds later, taking the stairs three at a time. Down and down, round and round, Fraser went, clinging to the banister, hauling himself around at every turn. He saw the door at the bottom. He flew down the last flight of stairs and hit the door at full speed. It burst open easily, too easily, and Fraser went sprawling face first onto the hardwood floor. He could hear heavy footsteps bounding down the stairs behind him. 
Fraser reached for the nearest bookshelf to hoist himself up, and immediately felt a searing pain rip through his right arm. It was then that he saw his wrist. It had taken the full weight of the fall, and now, bent grotesquely backwards, it was undoubtedly broken. Teeth clenched. Fraser hauled himself up with his good arm, and had just made it to his feet when, You stay right where you are. The voice was soft and sure. Fraser turned around slowly. In the doorway behind him stood the security guard, with his gun leveled at Mike Fraser's head. Ryan pulled out his handcuffs and threw them to the injured thief. Put him on. Fraser closed his eyes in disgust. Why don't you, he began, kiss my ass. Then suddenly, like a wounded animal, he lunged at the guard. Without a blink, Ryan raised his gun and fired it into the air above the fallen thief's head. The booming shot rang out in the silence of the library. Fraser dropped back to the floor as small white flakes of plaster began to flutter down around his head. Ryan stepped forward into the aisle, tightened his grip on his pistol, reasserted his aim at Fraser's head. I said put him on, so put... Ryan's eyes darted left. What was that? Fraser heard it too. And then, ominously, it came again. A long, slow growl, like the snort of a pig, only louder, much louder. What the hell was that? Fraser said quickly. Boom. A loud, dull thud. The floor shook. There's something down here, Fraser whispered. Boom, again. The two men stood there frozen. Ryan looked down the aisle beyond Fraser. It stretched endlessly away from them, disappearing into darkness. Silence. Dead silence. The wooden floor was still again. Let's get the fuck out of here, Fraser hissed. Shh! There's something down here, man, Fraser raised his voice. Boom! A tremor shook the floor again. A book teetering on the edge of a shelf fell to the floor. Let's go! Fraser cried. Boom! 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 Books began to fall off the shelves in bundles. Ryan leaned forward, grabbed Fraser by the collar. He pulled the thief's face up to his own. For God's sake, shut up! He whispered. Whatever it is, it's hearing your voice. And if you keep talking... Ryan stopped abruptly and frowned at Fraser. The young thief's eyes were wide with fear, his lower lip quivering madly, his whole expression one of total and utter disbelief. Ryan felt his blood run cold. Fraser was looking over his shoulder. Whatever it was, it snorted again, and as it did so, Ryan felt a wave of hot air rush across the back of his neck. It was behind him. It was right behind him. The gun went off as Ryan was yanked bodily off the floor. Fraser dropped to the ground, staring at the hulking mass of blackness before him. Ryan screamed as he struggled uselessly in the powerful arms of the dark shape. And then suddenly the creature bellowed loudly and hurled him through the nearest bookshelf. Books cascaded everywhere as Ryan's body doubled over and crashed right through the old wooden casing. The massive black shape lumbered around the bookshelf, looking for the body on the other side. In the dull yellow light, Fraser could see long black bristles flowing over a high arched back, saw demonic pointed ears and powerful muscular limbs, caught glimpses of matted black hair and gigantic scythe-like claws. Whatever it was, it picked up Ryan's body like a rag doll and dragged it back around to the aisle where Fraser sat. The flight through the bookshelf must have broken Ryan's back, Fraser guessed, but the security guard wasn't dead yet. Fraser could hear him moaning softly as the creature lifted him to the ceiling. It was then that Ryan screamed, a shrill, ear-piercing, inhuman scream. To his absolute horror, Fraser saw what was going to happen next, and he put his hand up over his face, just as he heard the sickening crack and an instant later he felt a torrent of warmth wash all over the front of his body. 
Ryan's scream cut off abruptly, and Fraser heard the beast roar a final time, followed by the thunderous crunching of wooden shelves. And then there was nothing. Silence. Total and utter silence. Slowly, Fraser removed his hand from his face. The beast was gone. The guard's body lay there in front of him, twisted and mangled, motionless. One of the bookshelves to his right lay horribly askew, wrenched free from its ceiling mountings. Blood was everywhere. Fraser didn't move, couldn't move. And so he just sat there, alone, in the cold emptiness of the New York State Library, and waited for the dawn. <laughs>